Hi everyone, Empress Justice here with the new moon reading in Shatabisha for the 2nd of March 2022. Now, this has been a very interesting year already. What I'm seeing though for the new moon in Shatabisha is a real questioning of what it is that we truly want in this life. Now, the moon in Shatabisha is normally a very dualistic one. There is an emphasis on passionate sexual union, but at the same time, we might have a little bit of an aversion to it. So there is this sort of dichotomy between our animal nature and our conscious one. And what I've often observed of the world around me is that it usually what we do is we like to act like we are conscious when really we are, we are indulging or overindulging our animal sides or going through a period of starving at our animal side and then overindulging it. So really what this new moon is about is basically figuring out the duality and the dichotomy within ourselves and finding a way to heal it. Now, I'm going to get straight to the cards because the cards reveal an awful lot. I've taken some of the cards from the Celtic Cross of March 2022 to um, begin this reading. <coughs> so what I'm going to do right now, forget, forgive me for the cough. I'm going to get weapons fired at my lungs in order to elicit a cough, you know, Havana syndrome. So watch out for that. So without further ado, let's get to the new moon in Shatabisha. And I've done cards on that and I've also done notes on it. So here we go. All right. So I did say that in the March 2022 reading that we will be releasing things that you know, we feel like we've been hanging on to out of necessity and we're really going to prioritize our desires and put them front and center. Now, again, the moon in Shatabisha is very sexual, but it's also very, very artistic and very creative. So channeling with our desires and what we truly want in this life, it has a creative edge to it. And we have to remember the five of cups. This is not just about severity. This is not just about sparsity and severity when it comes to love and when it comes to transcendental life what it is also about is adaptability moving through something growth evolution it's about moving on to pastures new and it's also about questioning the current situation that we are in that is at the crux of severity it's not actually limiting or drawing back or, or anything like that it's not about limitation what it's actually about is expansion but expanding in a way that assimilates with who we truly are as people so when it comes to love matters and sexual matters even when it comes to career or vocation or the things that we love to do we are being challenged to really look within ourselves in order to find out what it is that we truly need with the new moon being in aquarius we should expect the unexpected okay because what aquarius likes to do they don't like to do the opposite of what people expect they like to invert it instead that's what they like to do they don't do the opposite of what other people do they invert expectations rather than subvert it um, I'll give you an example. So imagine I'm, st imagine I'm standing and I'm putting my right hand up, right? I'm putting my right hand up in front of the mirror. The mirror shows that I'm putting my right hand up just in the opposite direction. The way Aquarius does things is if I'm putting my right hand up in the mirror, then what the mirror reflection will do is put the left hand up. There's an element of that to the new moon in Aquarius. It's about inverting expectations and not subverting them. It's about, you know, it's about, it's about inversion rather than playing it opposites. And that's what we're gonna end up doing. So expect the unexpected. Um, don't expect people to react the same way that they normally do to a situation. You might find that when you try to do the same thing that you always, you've always done, you might find that people will definitely react differently to, um, to the way that you expected them to simply because an Aquarius moon tends to bring that out in people. Also expect 
that people will be a lot more, how do I put this? I, I wouldn't say egalitarian, that's not really the right word to use, but people will be more focused on group efforts. There will be decidedly less ego and decidedly less, you know, grandiose movements and all that type of stuff, simply because um, that's usually what happens when the moon is in Aquarius. People tend to be less focused on themselves and more focused on the collective, which is good. But it also puts us right in line with our destiny. (coughs) There is a correlation between us finding our place in the world and us working to the collective effort. Us finding our destiny is not against the collective, but it's actually for the collective. If you find your destiny individual of other people's opinions of other people's attention or other people's approval. I think I said approval already. When you find your destiny, regardless of what other people say about it, it actually contributes to the collective in a real way. So inventors, for example, inventors, they're usually laughed at by everybody. You're a deadbeat, get a job. But then as soon as that invention works, it contributes to the world in a real substantial way. That's what destiny is. It's about finding out what you're truly good at, what you're truly at ease doing. But in finding that one thing that you're truly good at and that way you were truly destined to do, regardless of what everybody else thinks about it, in finding that, you realize that you have a lot more to offer than you thought. And the results of that are going to be far reaching and felt in a much more magnified capacity than you would have done if you'd have just focused on being glamorous or being liked. So, with that in mind, I have I now have to read what the cards say because what's going on here with from my notes is unhappy company, investing in study, studying in the family business, following in the family tradition, Vocalize your needs clearly, that's here. Walking away from something or someone. Generous family, keeping to oneself. Keeping a secret for the purpose of peace. Shielding someone. Moving house. Building own home. Long-term study. Insomnia, sleep problems, nightmares. I don't see nightmares for many of you. I do see that your dreams are going to be telling you a lot though. Um... When it comes to everything that the notes were saying, I do see that, again, the moon is in Shatabisha and the moon is in Aquarius. Whilst there is a deep desire for passion and for the Eros type of love, (coughs) we actually find that through our destiny. We find that through our destiny and we find that through what we are meant to do. So we may be naturally drawn towards finding our destiny rather than like just being around people for the sake of it. Many of us might choose to stay alone or to stay within our own quarters and to actually focus on what we are destined to do rather than shine our light and be braggadocious and all that type of stuff. I really do see us kind of coming inwards and reflecting and being alone. I see that here, especially because the four of knights, the four of knives, my apologies, is about seclusion. And then for here, it feels like you might be walking away from security, from the security of the world that you already knew. But what's actually happening is that you're walking away from a deficit and you're walking towards an asset. You're walking away from deficit and you're walking towards profit. And it's not just in the material sense. I really feel like it's more of an emotional sense than a psychological sense than anything else. You're walking away from something that you thought was good for you, but it's actually not good for you at all. And you're walking towards something that, something that is. What it means is that you might be secluded for a while, you might be isolated, but 
you will be in a really, really good position financially. This is great. Like you will be in a, like for those whom this resonates, when this new moon happens, when this new moon drops, you will be in a very, very good position, a very good position. So it really feels like you feel like you're losing something, but then when you've lost it, it's like, I got the same th feeling in another reading. You feel like you're losing something when really all you're doing is bringing yourself one step closer to the life that you actually wanted to live. And it's actually a wonderful thing. And when the new moon comes around, you're going to feel that very, very acutely. You're going to feel, it's going to feel like I'm actually on my way towards something that I'm supposed to be doing. It feels like you're literally on your path rather than away from it. Man, I love the new moon in Aquarius. I really love the new moon in Aquarius. Um, it just feels like you're kind of moving towards your destiny rather than away from it. Again, it's a lonesome path, but only at first. Only at first. Afterwards, because of the contribution that you end up leaving towards wider society... You're not alone for long. I can tell you that right now for nothing. And as for that passionate sexual relationship or that love relationship that you're looking for, that might be coming as well. But with that, you have to be careful because not everybody who's attracted to you means you're good. You've really got to vet people. If you find yourself um, attracted to anyone or you find anybody attracted to you, you've got to vet them carefully first. Because you can't be bringing anybody anybody and everybody up in that space or, or or down on that pole. Like you like it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. If you are attracted to someone and they're attracted to you, vet them. And vet them spiritually as well. Check out the vibes. Get the vibes of the person because they're more reliable than you might think. But yeah, many of us emotionally are going to be losing a way of life that we thought was good for us but in actuality it was fucking draining us and when we find that new way of life it's going to surprise us just how much at peace we actually are expect the unexpected all right so with that in mind i'm going to move on I'm going to do something that I've never done before. And I'm going to move on to the first quarter in Mrigashira in Taurus. Okay? So the, so the new moon takes place on the second. But the first quarter in Mrigashira, it takes place on the 10th of March. Now, this is another... This is a sign that is also to do with sex and pleasure and all the rest of it. But it's much gentler. It feels like love from a more earnest and more sincere perspective. So, again, we're losing what we think we needed. <laughs> we're losing what we thought we needed in, you know, to be replaced by what truly lights our soul on fire and being replaced by what is essentially our destiny, like bringing us one step closer to our destiny. Out of that comes... It comes a love that is actually substantial. It's like out of that hurt of having that loss, it cut, you know, it's immediately replaced by something that is way more wholesome, way more fulfilling, way more um, engaging than the thing that we walked away from. Now, with the moon and Rigashira itself, it's still a very gentle energy. It's a very curious energy that seeks out personal truth. It's a very curious energy. It's a very inquisitive energy that seeks out personal truth. But when it's in Taurus, it's very, very calm and very steady and very sensual too. There's this feeling of naturalness with the new moon in Rigashira. Okay. You don't want to offend anybody, but at the same time, the naturalness of who you are is going to come out in a wholesome, very unpretentious way. But it has a lot of class to it. So the real you does come out and you do do go in search of your personal truth, but it's in a way that is kind of unobtr unobtrusive to everybody else. Now, love is on the way. 
okay love is definitely on the way i hold on i didn't put the timer damn it it must have been okay i'll put it on for three minutes so love is definitely on the way for many for whom this reading resonates love is definitely on the way but it's different to this because this is more about um passion and and feeling like your soul is on fire and winona Ryder actually has shatabisha in her chart so all the energies from shatabisha they definitely still find their way into the first quarter in Rigashira because the the um the moon's energies from the new moon it lasts for about two weeks to 30 days so the passion left over from shatabisha is still very much there but it's almost as if it's it's softened to be something that is really really healthy and really stable and really grounded it's wonderful and i love it um what else can i say oh um there's something big that i kind of spotted before the reading took place but i actually wanted to wait until i saw the notes from the first quarter of Mrigashira before i started talking about this because i saw something big taking place here and i've actually got to get to the notes in order to get to that so all right we'll get to the notes now fuck the timer start over again all right so from the notes i've got hurting in a personal relationship legal advisor warrior competitor tyrant i see that here with the emperor card it's actually supposed to come from here because they've got they've got um the energy of an, the energy of another another card wrapped up in this so it's actually supposed to be here but the warrior tyrant and competitor i see here right hurting in a personal relationship legal advisor warrior competitor tyrant new politics politics aimed at young people new teacher you are surrounded by love romance success in business Meeting a teacher who will change your life. Meditation master, doctor, healthcare worker, dramatic person, drama. (coughs) Now, before I get into what the notes say, I feel like I have to say something very important that I witnessed here. Look at the knives. Look at them carefully. You've got somebody holding up a knife upright. And then the emperor pointing their sword. And then you have blood in this chalice right here. There's a sacrifice that has to be made. I feel like when the first quarter in Rigashira comes, or maybe a month, even a month after the, the first quarter in Rigashira comes, because my readings often come to pass a month after they've been read. I see that somebody in power is going to make a very, very huge error and it's going to cost lives. But as much as it might not have been orchestrated by the person themselves, remember we are all led by our chemical fraternities who are in charge of almost every facet of population control. Whoever this person is, blood will be drawn. So even in the midst of people finding love and finding, you know, success and finding their place in the world, at the same time that's happening, an important transition of power is going on globally. I don't want to say names because I could be wrong. But there could be a leader that escalates the current situation. Not in a big way immediately. But there could be a leader that that escalates the situation. Sacrifice. There's a sacrifice. The sacrifice could even be the leader themselves. 
It could even be the leader themselves. But there is a tyrannical element to this. But it's almost as if the old leader is making way for a new leader. That's what's going on globally. An old leader is making way for a new one when the first quarter in Mirgashira happens. <coughs> There's a sacrifice. It could be literal. I'm not going to lie to you. It could be literal. It could be... And it's, it's at the hands of somebody who's tyrannical, somebody who's older. The old power makes a sacrifice but it doesn't go the way they wanted it to. It doesn't go the way they wanted it to. What ends up happening instead is that the very type of power that they were trying to kill, it becomes the new power that emerges in the new order. So a sacrifice is going to be made, but it's, it's, it's going to go wrong for them anyway. For the rest of us, I don't know. There are still elements of Shatabisha that are strong and coming over into the first quarter. So it's unclear as to whether or not it might, well, it's not going to be good for the rest of us. It never is for the rest of us. But yeah, there will be a sacrifice made by a tyrant, but it's going to backfire because the thing is, the, the thing that the person died for is against the tyrant's interests. So yeah, it's scary. It's scary shit. Like, but that's what I saw. That's what I saw. There's a sacrifice. It could be personal. Could be societal. Could be. It could be, um, you know, global. But that's what I saw. A tyrant makes a sacrifice with somebody else, but that person's ideals they win out because it's rooted in truth, and that's what the tyrant is trying to avoid that's what the, the tyrant's trying to avoid the truth coming out but it comes out anyway oh, fuck okay um <laughs> i'm sorry i i oh fucking hell um The truth is, is that we are surrounded by love, but we're coming out of Eden. I did foresee this in the full moon in Mrigashira, that we were coming out of Eden. And I think this was the full moon in... I think this was the full moon in um, Mrigashira, in which I... I think it was in February, and February is when the war with Russia via Ukraine actually started. So I kind of predicted, I mean, Empress Justice kind of predicted the war without realizing she was doing it. So, uh, this new situation now, oh my Lord, okay. Oh, I think it was, I've, I've got to find it here. The full moon and Rigashira reading, because yeah, as as I said before, Empress Justice did foresee it. Just have to find the video and when it was. No, that's not the February new moon. That was the January new moon. Or January full moon. Let me see. Mrigashira. Maybe that was even in December. Yes, it was in December that I foresaw this. Let me just pause this and then you can hear exactly what exactly what I said about this. Hang on. This became a very different video. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So this is what I had to say about it here. Hello, Empress Justice here.
here with the full moon reading in Libra Shunya for 9th and 19th of December. Be prophesized that from the time that I saw you, it worked for me. But it's a war. I talk about the and war here. Happens. Hang on. The truth about, you know, the illusions that we have been subjected to, they come right to us. And those those breaking of illusions means we have to unlearn everything and kind of relearn everything again. That's A. B, it's a catalyst to what sets off 2020. Now, what I predict for 2020, just based on the full moon in Rigashira alone, which is... 2022. Listen to this. This is the full moon reading in Rigashira for the 19th. Listen to what I say here. In Gemini and Rigashira. What I get from that alone is that uh, people are going to be willing to die for their freedom. We're in a whole different ball game now. People are getting fed up of the same stuff that they, you know, they keep being, that keeps being regurgitated to them. 2022 is going to bring, uh, going to bring a reinforcement of distrust of illusion, distrust of the Garden of Eden, distrust of you know, God's plan, because having eaten the fruit, the tree of the fruit of knowledge, having eaten that, now we're starting to see things as they are. And once that happens, there's no going back. So I feel like people discover something, not necessarily catastroph catastrophic or earth shattering, but something vitally important that kicks off a whole global trend from 2022. I feel like a war is coming, I'm not gonna lie. Right, did you hear that shit? Did you hear that shit? Empress Justice predicted right there that there would be a war. And now there is one, okay? And it's one that could involve the entire planet. The Garden of Eden, was being uncovered back then. And with the first quarter in Rigashira, we are seeing that happen in real time. And if you thought that the first quarter in Rigashira was anything, you wanna watch what happens with the third quarter of Moolah. I'm just saying, you better prepare, but that I'll come to that in the full moon reading. But this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that Mrigashira tears down Eden's walls. It tears down Eden's walls and it exposes us to what's really going on. The wonderful thing is, is that love is found within it. But don't be surprised if the old world or our old loves or the people that once had dominion and control over us try to sacrifice us and in that way it might not be sorry the music's really loud in that way it might not be literal but globally a sacrifice is being made of a leader or by a leader literally but in our personal lives, it's more metaphorical than anything else. The tyrant, the tyra tyrannical elements in our lives of the old love that we've let go of, they want to try to maintain control over us, but it backfires because we end up finding the love that we've been looking for, the love that we've been searching for, and not even just in our personal relationships, but in the in the in the destinies, you know, in our destiny too, we find it in our destiny. We find, you know, the love that we have is destined. It reaffirms our status in the world, and it allows us to be authentic. That's the type of love that we find in the first quarter in Rigashira. So, yeah, 
That and that me predicting a war that was from the 19th of December 2021. But it's funny how when war escalates, love becomes even more important, or maybe that's just the universe balancing everything out. Maybe that's why we take one another for granted until something serious happens. But yeah, first quarter in Rigashira, a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be. But let's see how this unfolds. Fake love. The fake love is gone. The rose-tinted glasses of Rohini is ripped off. In the new moon in Shatabisha, even though it's Aquarius, I mean, you know, it's Aquarius. It's an Aquarius new moon. The new moon in Shatabisha inverts everything in order to see the truth. And that, that's literally what alchemy does as well. And then once we're on the path towards seeing it, we're led to real and genuine love. In a way that's unexpected, but there's sacrifice that happens before then. And it happens by somebody who wanted to keep you, who wanted to keep control of you, but it backfires. I need some water after that. <coughs> My knights, the empress needs some water. She really needs some water after that. So, without further ado, let's get on with the 12 signs. I'm coming to Aquarius now. So, it's a very sobering reading. Let me see, let's get the card out for Aquarius. Aries, Scorpio. All right. All right, so Aquarius. Now, Aquarius, the new moon is of course highlighting your first house. I don't think I need to go into houses. I'm not going to go into houses. I'm just going to read the cards. So, the card that I got for you for the whole of March was the Seven of Swords. Or the cards that I got for you was the Seven of Swords and Vibrant. There are secrets being kept that one way or another you need to reveal to the public. But as I exemplified in my March 2022 reading, as I pointed out, you need to reveal those secrets and the only difference that it makes is how big the secret is and how much it affects everyone if it's a personal secret that needs to be revealed you need to reveal it now if it's something affecting everything on a global scale you need to be careful about who you reveal it to because that can make the difference between you being safe and not being safe. <coughs> but secrets need to be revealed. No more hiding, no more secrets. But what did the new moon card say for you? Now I've got the notes here for Aquarius. It says you're stuck in fear. It says... There is sibling rivalry. It says there are new relationships. It says you're losing interest in something or someone. And that there is charismatic thrill seeking or a charismatic thrill seeker. And that there's a determined leader. Let me look at these cards a bit more carefully.
I look at all of this and the, the, the image I get is being caught up in a rose bush without roses. There's, there's no roses and it's all thorns. Now, normally that's not what these cards represent because you're talking about the Knight of Wands and the Three of Baskets. This actually represents... I don't, I don't know, um, do you rem I can't remember the name of it, but it's that staff with the two snakes wrapped around it, and, hold on, the symbol for medicine is what I'm getting here. Medicine symbol. But yeah, it's the snake. Yes, when I look at this, I get the rod of Asclepius, the staff of Hermes. So this is to do with health as well. This is to do with health and this is to do with, um, yeah, this is to do with your health. This is to do with health matters. Um, you'll be, you've been, some of you might have been told that there's no hope, but there is hope. There is hope. It's not anything deep. But the thing is, is that for some of you, your refusal to accept your situation is at the root of your problem. <laughs> your refusal to accept your situation and, your, and especially your refusal as to what you're feeling about it is actually at the root of your problem. You're stuck in the fear of what you wouldn't be able to do rather than thinking about all the things that you are going to be able to do and will be able to do. So it feels that health wise, some of you might have come into a problem, but it, you know, I'm not going to say it's not bad for some of you. It could be really, really bad, but acceptance of the situation it may enable you to kind of move through it with a bit more decisiveness. In Bruce Lee's book, The Jeet of Kundo, which isn't really a book, it's just a series of notes. There's a Taoist philosophy that in order to cure the illness, you have to become the illness, which is the full exact, which is the exact philosophy of Mars, if we really want to go there. But in order to get through the illness, you have to become the illness. So in order for you to kind of find a way to lead a healthy life, despite any health problems you might have, you have to become the illness itself. You have to wrap yourself up in it. Allow yourself to feel the feelings emotionally because at the root of your pain, for some of you, is your refusal to accept how you feel. It's not the pain itself that you're having a hard time dealing with. It's never the pain itself, but it's how the pain makes us feel. Now with me, with Empress Justice, Empress Justice went through a situation almost two years ago now. Well, no, no, it's not almost two years ago. It was last year. And... I experienced pain in my hips. I was being electronically attacked. Havana syndrome is a real thing. You can look it up. And I experienced pain in my hips and in my pelvis and in my back all at once. And the pain was absolutely searing. And the reason why that experience didn't scar me as much as it could have done is not because I is not necessarily because I accepted the situation, but it was actually because I accepted how I was feeling. So when people would bring that incident up to me, instead of feeling like, oh, you know, I'm really embarrassed at the way I acted, I'm like, no, I was in a lot of pain. Like I was in, I was in a serious amount of pain. But it was because I accepted how I felt about the pain. And I accepted that there were certain things I might not be able to do again. Luckily, it wasn't permanent. And luckily, I wasn't permanently immobilized. But it was through accepting that this might be permanent. And it was through accepting how I felt about that. 
it was through accepting those things that I was able to find little ways here and there of, you know, making it, you know, little ways here and there. Like in the hospital, the, the nurses technically shouldn't have allowed me to do this, but this is exactly what I did. I crawled to the bathroom. And there are times where I was able to hobble to the bathroom and there are times where I was I had to crawl to the bathroom. So it's like I found little ways through the pain or through being immobilized. I found little ways through the problem. And I feel like with you, Aquarius, it's much the same way. Instead of fighting what's going on, you have to find a way through that is the only way you're going to have any peace going through what you're going through health wise you have to look at things from a different angle and celebrate the little good things that are happening and I know it seems like I'm telling you to ignore your emotions after I just told you to embrace them but no that's not what this is you have to embrace your emotions and how you feel. And that's the only way you're going to get through this Aquarius. You have to accept how you feel. So that was for Aquarius. That was for Dhanishta, Shatabisha and Purva Bhadrapada. Thank you, Aquarius. All right. Virgs. I've got to find your I've got to find your card from the March 2022 reading in order to get a real sense of this. Hang on. Oh, Virgs, here we are. Okay. There we go. So, Virgo, what do we see for not not the wheel of fortune twice, bro? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Not the Wheel of Fortune twice. No. Come on. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Virgo. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let me have a look at this. Okay. So we've got the Justice card, Strength card. No, this is the Strength card. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune then we have the seven of baskets. Now, Virgo, I told you in your March 2022 reading that, yes, you have a strong, like your higher self has a real strong sense of destiny. It has a real strong, strong sense of what goes up must come down. And your feeling for timing is exemplary. That is the reason why you're so good at so many different things. Like, Virgos have a reputation of being extremely talented, um, especially, especially um, moon dominant Virgos. You have the reputation of being extremely talented and knowing exactly how to capture the public's imagination with your art. OK. And. The reason for this is that because you understand how fate works, you understand the sense of timing, you understand a sense of, you know, and you have this way of, like I said, in the March 2022 reading, you have this way of working through the intricacies of each stage of a cycle and working your way through it and adapting to it. So your down is never quite down. Your up is never quite up either, but your down is never quite down because you've already prepared for it. And with this going on, Whatever happens globally, societally, or individually, you are going to win big. Okay? Because having these two together, that's a big deal. Okay? That's a big deal. Now, what I've got for the notes is strength, wheel of fortune, and the seven of baskets. But... I've also got, yeah, it's, yeah, it, this is crazy. Um, you've got a lot of wonderful things in store for you, Virgo. And you know what, the, you know what the odd thing is? You don't do anything. You don't do anything. 
it, it's one of those occasions where you haven't done anything, but all this good fortune comes to you out of nowhere or seemingly out of nowhere. But the truth of the matter is, it's not true that you haven't done anything. It's just that when things were really bad, you made preparations. You made preparations and you you basically, you had a, a solid structure to work on. And now that things are working out really, really well for you, they're working out really, really well for you because of the simple reason that you actually planned and prepared for obstacles and you did it very very beautifully so yeah this is yeah this is pretty da- <laughs> this is pretty this is a wonderful reading for the virgos i'm not gonna lie um let's look at the notes so hang on a sec let me put the timer on for the notes i've got courageous public speaker strong investor finding yourself i i see a lot of that Public Recognition Award, Passionate Innovator, Courageous Writer, Strong Pharmaceuticals, Destined to be Self-Employed, Destined to Rule, Online Invitations, Successful Artist, Renewal, Passion for Fairness, Strong Law Enforcer, Fantasy, Virgos, I'm not going to lie to you. What I see for you is you being put in a position where you were supposed to be vulnerable. But instead of you being vulnerable right along with that situation, you find your power in it. The image that I get is being in hospital, being in a psychiatric ward, in a war zone. And instead of you kind of panicking along with everyone else, you step up and you start leading people. And then your leadership expands from the psychiatric ward to the rest of the hospital and then from the rest of the hospital to the like the community and then from the community onwards. That's what I see. That's the type of image I get with what I see from the Virgos. That's the type of energy that I see from you. I see you being in a situation where you are supposed to be vulnerable and you're supposed to be lacking freedom or agency or power but instead you turn that right around and you become ex- extremely powerful, extremely, because the thing is, you're prepared. The, the thing about Virgos, everybody calls Virgo a worry war, but you don't understand. Virgos are always prepared for every situation. And don't even get me started on Mars dominant Virgos. They wrote the fucking book on alchemy. They wrote the book on being able to take a situation that is completely unfavorable to them and completely turning it around. And that's exactly what you Virgos end up doing. The fact that this is this right here, this right here. Big, big financial change, and it's going to be a a positive one. A positive, a positive financial change is what I'm seeing for the Virgos right now. So you're going to be in a position where you're supposed to be vulnerable, but the the shit don't work like that, Virgs, because you're Virgo. You're Virgo. You're an alchemical sign. You're an alchemical sign. You, You know, whatever situation you find yourself in, you find a way to make it assimilate. You find a way to assimilate it towards its self realization. And that's the kind of sign you are. So you shouldn't be surprised if you end up in a situation where you're supposed to be, you know, like at your lowest. But instead, you turn that right around and next thing you know, you're in charge of every fucking thing. It's that it's that type of energy. It, it, could, it doesn't have to mean literally. It doesn't have to mean literally. But there's something in the way that you handle this situation that makes you so powerful but I've got to look at I've got to look at your reading for March 2022 to get a real sense of what's going on because I've forgotten some details and I want to see what those details are. One second. Oh. Hello again. <laughs> All right, so let's look at Virgo. So let's turn this music off and see what I've said about you, Virgo. So let's get to it. First of all, 
The Wheel of Fortune card represents higher Virgo energy. Uh-huh. It represents understanding the closed system of how life operates. Basically. All right, so life I've got to get to the... And, God. and the reason for that is... I've got to get to the forgiveness part. Is because there are going to be situations coming at you that are supposed to be a threat to you, but you're going to swerve and dodge. Swerve, swerve and, and dodge. dodge. And the reason for that is, is because you've cal- you've already calculated certain things in your mind before these things started happening. So it's like things that were supposed to catch you off guard, they don't catch you off guard. And the people... Right. So this is exactly what I was talking about in March 2022. And it starts as early as the new moon. So let's put the music back on. It starts as early as March 2022. So, so yeah, that's the situation you find yourself in. And when it comes to the forgiveness angle, um, as I said in the reading for March 2022, you've already chosen to forgive your enemies a long time ago. So this isn't about that. But your enemies will try to throw obstacles at you and you will swerve and dodge. But it really feels that it really feels like if anything big happens, then you're going to absolutely turn it around in your favor, Virgo. That's how this feels. And I, and I feel like you will. You absolutely will. Because luck is definitely on your side right now. Luck is absolutely on luck is absolutely on your side. Um, so, yeah, that was for the Virgos. That was for Uttara Falguni, Hasta and Chitra. Listen, Virgo, I'm rooting for you. Trust me. Gem gems. Hey, how's it going? You know what, gem gems? You know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to give you not only the card from the March 2022 reading, I'm going to give you the missing card that I was supposed to find in the March 2022 reading. You you lucky people. Because I actually found the original card that I was supposed to get for you. That's right here. Now, in the linear world that we live in, there is such a thing as fucking up. Empress Justice fucked up. (laughs) And that's why, Gemini, that she couldn't find your card. But the fact that I was supposed to find it now speaks volumes. I get inspire others and I get stand firm, creating boundaries, empower and personal power. This is about your personal power, Gemini. And I did say that it feels like you're losing something and it feels like you have to start all over again with a particular way of life. But the truth of the matter is, is that what you think you're losing, uh, you know, that empower card, it could have gone with the rest of the reading because the thing that you think you're losing, Gemini, is nothing compared to what you end up building when you start from the bottom. So that's what I said in the March 2022 reading. Now, looking at the notes, we've got secure career change. Yeah. Having visions, prophecy, creating a masterpiece, financial study, money to study, investing in education, renewing yourself based on your deepest need. That's exactly what happens here. And sensitive psychic. Now, Again, the changes that you're going through and the changes that are happening to you, they feel, (coughs) this is the thing that you hate. The changes that you're going through, they feel like they're not rooted in reality. It feels like you're giving up something practical. You're giving up something. There's crows watching me outside. I don't know if they're crows or blackbirds, but they're watching me like a hawk, bitch. All right, Gemini. And the, the thing is, there are two, there are two crows out there, Gem Gems. Look, look. There's two crows out there. <laughs> I feel like that's to, that's to do with you, James. I feel like that's to do with you. All right. But yeah, so I really feel that 
you feel like you're losing something that is maybe it's a job or something it could be a job it could be a profession but you feel like you're letting go of something that has security and that has like in order to pursue what a creative career or a career that has little to no chance of success but in your case, Gemini, because you're so savvy when it comes to how people work when it and the thing, just like that, just like that, the crows doubled. Look at this, Gem. The bird, the amount of birds doubled. Look at that. But yeah, this is the thing, Gemini. What you thought was, yeah, what you thought was... I'm sorry, I have to navigate the noise disturbance from upstairs. What you actually thought was you letting go of something practical and something that could make you some real money or make you some real, you know, you know, gain you some real wealth. You feel like you're letting that go on what? A wing and a prayer? Like, what the fuck is that going to do? So you're you're basically feeling like, Yes, I'm doing something that's right for me as a person, but what's going to happen to me financially? What's going to happen to the people that I care about financially? But the thing is, where you're starting in an industry that you're passionate about, but you need to know more about the industry part, that actually leads to greater wealth and it leads to you becoming more of a business person because the mother of baskets, it represents a woman who is you know, it, this relates to men too. It relates to both women and men. So I don't feel like this is gendered. But the mother of baskets literally represents feminine energy that is devoted to her friends and devoted to her passions and her career. So I feel that your devotion to something that you're actually passionate about and making a business or a career out of it, you're thinking that it's actually going to make you less financially stable when in actuality, it's actually going to make you more financially stable. It's not going to harm you. It's it's one of those things where, you know, you want to do the right thing. You want to do the realistic thing. But in this case, the realistic thing is just going to hold you back, Gemini. In a new moon, let it go. Just let it go. Let that shit go. Because at the end of the day, who you are as a person and what your deepest need is, deepest need is, is way more important than <coughs> is way more important than what other people think you should want or what the world thinks you should want. Renewing yourself based on who you actually are, renewing your career based on who you actually are is going to profit you a lot more in the long run than if you listen to other people saying, oh, what are you doing that for? Like, you, you got a comfortable job or you got a comfortable life. What are you doing that for? Like, don't listen to them. Fuck them fuck them like they're not you and they, they don't know your life and they don't know about your charm and your persuasiveness and your sense of fun and how how much of a commodity that is so just don't listen to them listen to your own heart okay listen to your own heart gem gems because you know what's up you know what's up and those birds that you saw outside i don't know if there were more black i think there were baby crows on top of the crows that were already there, right? This is exactly what I'm talking about, them crows outside. So you start off, Gemini, having a relatively stable profession. You have the two crows outside. And then them two crows became four. Your good luck multiplies when you find something that you're truly passionate about. So yeah, you have to start at the bottom. It's okay. When the new moon comes around, you've got to start at the bottom. You know what you really love to do, but now you have to study the industry side and get to know it. And that's going to be a slow process. It's not going to be a quick one, but that's okay. Because the path that it sends you on, you end up with something better than what you left behind. Come into your power. Your power is important. Set the boundary that you're going to do what's right for your own heart. And you will inspire others, Gemini. So that was for Gem Gems. That was for uh why I call it them. Rigashira, Ardra, 
and Punavasu. Thank you, Gem Gems. All right, hold on. All right, so now we come to Pisces. Now let's find the card for Pisces from the March 2022 pile. That would be the last card, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right, Pisces. So I got for you that you were caught between a rock and a hard place because you wanted change, but at the same time you wanted to settle down. But settling down is the change. But what does the rest of the reading say for you for the new moon, though? Yeah, and yet yeah, here we are. New direction, new destiny, beginner's luck. Renewing yourself based on deepest need, new job, new calling in life, fortunate business deal. All right. So. Pisces. Let's have a look at you. Sorry. So Pisces. Yeah. You're another sign that's finding yourself right now. And because of that you're realizing that you don't want to actually live a chaotic or nomadic life, like you're not interested in that anymore. In fact, you've become rather disillusioned with it. Um, whereas Gemini is kind of being encouraged to sort of like, you know, follow a more abstract path of intelligence, like Pisces, you are all about rationality right now. You're all about the day-to-day -day life. You're all about having order and having structure. And I know people say this is atypical of your sign, but it's actually not atypical of your sign at all. This is who you are. A lot of people think that Pisceans are just fly by night and they, you know, they just, you know, they just do whatever. But the thing is, in my personal experience, for me, it's actually been the Virgos that have been a bit more chaotic in terms of, yeah, they work and everything. But in my personal experience, it's actually been the Virgos that are more chaotic, moving from job to job, like, you know, not really, you know, having a solid daily routine, but not having a solid professional one. Whereas the, the Pisceans in my life that I've met, they're the ones who are able to hold on to a job. They're the ones who have been able to kind of manage their day to day life. They're the ones who are constantly cleaning. They're the ones who have everything you know, have a place for everything and everything in its place. So from my personal experience, it's actually the Pisceans who are very organized and who are very, there's this reputation for Pisceans for being crybabies who just do nothing all day, but that's not true at all. And Pisces, you are kind of letting go of this idea that you're supposed to be this bohemian. You're like, I ain't doing this shit. I want to settle down. I actually want to have a life. So in your case, you're feeling like whatever it is that you do now, if you're <coughs> if you're looking for a job this full moon, this new moon, sorry. If you're looking for a job this new moon, you're looking for something solid. You're looking for something stable. If you're looking for a job, it has to be something stable. If you're looking for a home, it has to be something stable. If you're looking for a relationship, it has to be something that's committed. You are sick and tired of the fly-by-night nonsense. You're tired of it. Okay? You're sick and you're sick and tired of the fly-by-night nonsense. You're just sick of like just moving from place to place, meeting person to person. And maybe I'm just projecting my own 36 year old ass all over this. But, you know, that's what I see for a lot of Pisceans right now. You know, I know that you like to have your routine flexible, but that's only so that you can properly maintain a solid and, you know, and realistic, realistic way of living. That's the only reason why you're more adaptable. That's the only reason. You're not this sort of, you're, you're, you're not flighty like people think you are. So I feel that whoever's going to come into your life, they really need to come correct in this case. Okay. Whoever's going to come into your life, they need to come correct. 
be it friends or, or lovers or even your family, even your family have got to come correct because you're kind of in the mood now where if you are not part of my long-term plans and you are a hindrance to that, I'm not keeping you in my life. And it's really as simple as that. If you're a hindrance to me and you're a hindrance to my progress, I'm not keeping you around. So I really feel that Pisceans, right now you're very serious about your lives. Let's have a look at this. So yes, you are embarking on a new phase of your life, Pisceans, but it's a phase of stability. What goes up must come down. I don't know if you guys are young. I feel like a lot of the Pisceans that might look at this might be very young, but it doesn't matter. It, it just feels like you want to build wealth and you want to build stability. So you're not about to have this whole fly by night foolishness. That's the new, that's the new part. It feels like for some of you Pisceans, you might have been performing the, the traveling bohemian part because you felt like that's what you were supposed to do subconsciously. But now you're like, no, no, I don't want to do that anymore. And so you won't for the new moon. You're going to be having long term objectives in your mind. And honestly, I feel that that's a good path for you. So. It's a relatively short reading for Pisceans, but that was for Pisces. That was for Perva Bajrapada, Uttara Bajrapada, and Revati. Thank you, Pisces. Whew. And now, hold up. Aries. All right. Okay. Okay, so we've got the got the mother of sticks again. Let's just see. What mother did I have last time? What mother did I have for Gemini? Because I think I might have fucked up there. Mother of Baskets. Yeah, I had the Mother of Baskets for Gemini. But I fucked up. This is the Mother of Sticks series. Okay. So, let's see what we get for you. So, we've got Page of Wands. Listen to your heart's desire. Um, let's see what I got for the March 2022 reading for you. Give a brief outline of that. Hold up. Okay, so now the note that I've got for you is strong person, listen to your heart's desire and move on. All right, and the page of wands for Aries. So, what this means for you is that the way you're feeling right now, you're feeling very resilient, regardless of the situation that's actually in front of you. And I know that sounds vague, but it feels like you know there are changes that have to be made. So instead of basically, you know, losing your mind over them or feeling like you have to, you know, feeling like you have to panic, instead you're like, okay, so some changes are, are happening right now. It could be a move. Um, it could be a change. All right. So. So what we got for that was that Aries was feeling very resilient for March 2022, whatever changes are coming your way, you're going to meet them with your stereotypical positive attitude, your go get them attitude. And now what I've got the notes, what I've got for the notes for the new moon for you is new apprentice, new skill, sensitivity, audition, enthusiastic entrepreneur, new passion, postgraduate, intern, artistic talents, air hostess, holiday romance. So it really feels like whatever changes are coming your way, and there are going to be changes coming your way, it might be a move, it might be a change of profession, but whatever changes are coming your way, Aries, you're going to embrace them wholeheartedly. 
So it's a very different vibe from Pisces, who is just like, I'm settling down. I'm not even asking. I am settling down. You are like, okay, well, this isn't really what I wanted. But if that's the way it's going to be, then I'm going to make the most of it. Fuck it. Now, what we've got here is the Eight of Pentacles, the Knave of Cups, and the Mother of Sticks. The Mother of Sticks is the feminine energy that embraces like i said in in gemini and i'm going to rectify that later in the comments the mother of sticks represents the feminine energy that is devoted to her friends and devoted to her career and i really feel that you have already made up your mind that no matter where you are placed or what is going on, you have already made up your mind that you are going to be entirely focused on your purpose. And Arians have always been careerist anyway. You've always been the kind of sign that's very, very interested in your work. But I feel that when it comes to this change that's possibly happening in your life, um, you're going to be especially resilient when it comes to um, what you end up doing with your life. I feel like you're going to be very resilient, very sort of, you know what, this is what I'm going to do and nobody is going to stop me from doing it. There are some new situations I feel like it might be with relationships and finances. For here, um, again, it might be a move. I say might because nothing is concrete. But it feels like you may have to relearn something financially or you may end up being given resources that you're not necessarily familiar with, but that you'll embrace in order to kind of make the most of them. You might get a gift from somebody that you don't understand at first, but then when you start using it, you're like, wow, I never realized that before. Oh, this is good. No, I've never realized that before. So it might be something like that. I don't see new relationships for you, but I do see a new way of approaching the existing relationships that you have. I see you becoming more sensitive, more understanding, even a bit more cautious in the way that you speak to people. I feel that you might actually be, you know, all that gung ho attitude and, you know, jolly hockey stick stuff. You might actually just save that for your career or your personal interests. And then it might just be that your family or your friends or your, your romantic partners, they get the nice part. You know, they get the nice side of you. They get the warm, fluffy side. Whereas they go out into the world and it's the world that gets the fierce side. You understand what I'm saying? So you go out and kick ass and then you come home and then you bring all the lovely, cuddly energy back with you. So it might just happen like that. I mean, I feel that Arians feel very comfortable at the moment with all the chaos happening. I feel that Aries is a sign that's very comfortable with chaos. So this current situation um, with regards to Aries, I'm not surprised that you guys are thriving in it because you're the kind of sign that's just completely comfortable with everything going haywire. Um what else do I see for Aries? You have a new pin. You have a new pin. What does that mean? Shiny new pin. You have a shiny new pin. Normally when you get that, either you're starting a job or you might be in the army and you're kind of going up a rank. You might be getting a promotion. Some of you, whoever's working, you might get a promotion. Any working Aries might be promoted. That's what the new pin represents. You might be elevating in your career. Because again, that kick-ass attitude, you take that into the workplace and then you come home and you bring all the cuddly stuff with you. That so... Yeah, I feel like when it comes to your workplace, you're going to be kicking ass and taking names and it's going to pay off. And I feel that when, it, you know, that's why when you come home, you're so relaxed and you're so carefree is because when you go out to work, you go out to work boots to asses, right? 
I feel like your emotional life will be all the richer because of it. And I feel that you will, if there are any conflicts within your family, Aries, then it's gonna actually going to be you that's going to be the peacekeeper. And you're not going to be doing it by like pulling people's, pulling people apart by their ears or nothing like that. But you're actually going to be doing it by empathizing with people and by saying, you know what, listen, I know what both sides are feeling, but like, come on, chill, chill. So I feel that you are going to be a mediator. You're going to be, um, you know, just, just calming people down, just putting people at ease, like chill out, chill out. It's going to be all right. Okay. So I feel that it's going to be a good new moon for the Aryans. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's not exciting or anything, but it's going to be one of those occasions where whatever, whatever's coming your way, you're just going to embrace it. And you're just going to find a way to make the most of it. And you're going to keep the peace very successfully, I might add, because people are more likely to listen to you. And I feel that you'll be, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, ni it's a nice new moon for the Aryans. It's nothing too crazy. Um, it's just that if there are any new situations that arise, you're going to 100% embrace them. That's what's going to happen. So... That was for Arians. That was for Ashvini, Barony, and Kritika. Thank you, Aries. Right. Scorpio. I I already like what I'm seeing for the notes for you, Scorpio. I already like it. So the theme of March 2022 for the Scorpios is you opening up to the people that you love and sharing your vulnerability, admitting where you've made mistakes and forgiving other people for their mistakes. Um, despite you being very emotional, it's actually very hard for you to be vulnerable sometimes because it's like, you don't, you know, you feel like, this is the thing with Mars signs or, you know, or any Mars dominant signs the reality of rejection or you know unforgiveness the reality of it is actually a lot less hurtful than anticipating it and i feel that with many scorpios when it comes to love when it comes to opening up when it comes to being vulnerable you're anticipating something that might not even hurt that much when it actually happens so You know, I feel like the new moon is going to hold some good opportunities for you emotionally and financially, I think, as well. Because what I see for your notes is happy person, artistic talents, popular, outspoken person, determined to succeed, pursuing happiness, renewal, protector. So, yeah, I feel that for those scorpions who open up their heart and seek love and seek peace in the new moon, you're going to find it. I feel like those who, are, you know, even if you don't do it in the new moon, hang on, let me see what happens for you in the full moon. Listen, you opening up and being vulnerable is going to be met very, very favorably. There are people who are going to welcome you with open arms. Like I said, in March 2022, when you open your arms to people, they're going to open their arms right back. So rather than just anticipating rejection in new moon, in the new moon in March, just say something, Scorps. Just say something because the outcome of that is wonderful. At first, there is some defensiveness there. There is some... You know, there's some hesitancy on your part and on the part of the people that might want to listen to you. But when they actually hear what's truly in your heart and they start to realize how tender and sensitive and even how naive you can be sometimes, like 
instead of people feeling like, man, this person's an asshole. Like, instead of people feeling like that, they're going to think to themselves, wow, Scorpio's really, Scorpio's really sweet. Scorpio's really tender. Scorpio it gets easily hurt. Okay, I'll remember that next time. And then they're going to remind themselves, look, if they're reacting a certain way, it's not because they're angry. It's because they're anxious and afraid. And they're going to remember, look, the best way to get around a Scorpio is to make them feel safe. And when you open up your heart to these people and you say to them, look, I get like this because I'm afraid. I don't get like this because I'm actually angry at you. They'll they'll remember, OK, well, I'm going to the next time that I have a disagreement with Scorpio, I'm going to make sure that just because they've done a bad thing, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person. I'm going to remind them of that. So that's what they're going to remember about you when you decide to open yourself up and say, look, I'm sorry, I do things that are wrong. I, I know that I do things that are wrong. I'm really, really sorry. You know, but you have to be honest, that's a catch. When you open up, you have to open up honestly. Even if you think it's going to make you look bad, but I guarantee you it won't. You'd be surprised how many people feel the same way as one another does. You'd be surprised. And when you open yourself up and you admit, yeah, I make mistakes and I feel like this and I, I do think do things like this. And I, when you come out with that, people are going to remember next time exactly how to relate to you. And what that leads to is happier relationships for you overall as a whole so i feel that in march the new moon in march or the new moon energy is going to be very tender very kind very sort of you know not fun but there's going to be a lot of tenderness for the scorpios i feel there's going to be a lot of tenderness a lot of kindness a lot of warmth um not only from the scorpios but towards the scorpios there's going to be a lot of kindness and warmth passed back and forth between you. I feel like the omission of your feelings is really going to open, is going to be a catalyst for the improvement of relationships in other areas of your life as well. And it, it won't just affect you, it will affect people outside you as well. By you being vulnerable and making other people feel at ease, they end up making people feel at ease and then it just continues on like that. So you being sweet it has far-reaching consequences in a really really good way so yeah I, that's what i see for the scorpios i see you guys being really sweet really kind really vulnerable and getting that same energy and i love it for you i'm very very happy for you don't worry about it don't worry about it it's all gonna be okay and on the, the unlikely event that you open your uh, heart to certain people and you don't get that energy back, you're going to get that energy from somewhere. It's not going to be in vain. So that was for Scorps. That was for Vishaka, Anuradha and Jeshta. Love you, Scorps. Oh, shit. Okay, and now we got to come. We got to come to the big tamales right now. We got to come to. <laughs> got to come to the sage. What's going on, Sagittarius? So now, not gonna lie, when I saw these cards, I was not hopeful. Okay. <laughs> um. I think I said something to Aquarius along the lines of if you embrace your fear or become your fear, then you master your fear. And I definitely get that here. Um, for the notes I've got for you, I've got emotional pain, regrets, being surrounded by negative people. Hands on study, practical abilities, outsmarting others, I definitely see. And I'll get to that in a minute. 
overstimulation, restlessness, scholarship, sponsorship, lonely person, emotionally unavailable. I feel like you're the one who's going to be unavailable to people. I feel that you breaking the habits that your loved ones wanted you to break, it has the unforeseen consequences of you having less contact with them. Sometimes what we find is that when we have when we reach a certain period of our lives, we we get people in our lives who match that energy. And when they no longer match that energy anymore, they kind of filter a way out of your life in a way. And I feel like that's exactly what's happening with Sagittarius. You embrace your fate, you embrace your devil, you embrace your fear. Now, there's a, there is a risk that you might let your fear take you over too much. But when you fully embrace it, you prevent that from happening. When you fully embrace the devilish part of your nature and the fearful part of your nature and the materialistic part of your nature, when you fear, fully embrace it rather than running away from it, you end up becoming more whole as a sign. And a lot of that means taking your emotional pain and regrets and the negativity that you're surrounded by dragging yourself deep into the feelings that come with that and then coming out the other side knowing exactly how to deal with it I feel that because you are embracing that side of yourself Sagittarius you are um I feel like by embracing that side of yourself Sagittarius you are finding your power and you end up influencing the world around you in a very real and significant way. There's a lot of power in you, Sagittarius, and you're going to reveal that from as early as tomorrow. You're going to reveal that. But don't be surprised when the fullness of your power from embracing the negativity and from getting down deep down there with it. Don't be surprised if it becomes even more concentrated at the next full moon. Because, it, you know, it's just one of those things where you're kind of having, having a similar trajectory to Virgo. The thing that was meant to kill you, the thing that was meant to drag you down and bring you down to the depths is actually the thing that saves you or the thing that gives you your power. So you're having a similar experience to Virgo right now, only in your case, it's on a psychological level more than a physical one. The things that make you feel bad. And that's the thing that Jupiter usually tries to run away from with all its might. Anything that makes it feel bad. But the thing that makes you feel bad and preparing for the plan B's and arguing with his, with success. It's just going to make you more successful. It's just going to make you more successful. Like you arguing with this, with success in your case will just make you more successful. You embracing your fear and getting down with it, it's just going to make you less afraid. You embracing your emotional pain and getting in with it and sitting with it, it's just going to make it hurt less. So in your, in, and yeah, embracing your regrets is going to make you regret life less. So what I see for you, Sagittarius, is you like at first being resistant to the negativity, but then kind of allowing it, it like becoming one with it, not allowing it to consume you, but becoming one with the void. When you become one with it, when you end up going through the same shit again, it just doesn't have the same impact. The same psychological punches that used to affect you, it's not going to affect you anymore for the simple reason that you didn't run away from what made you feel bad. You didn't run away from it. You just you just stuck with it and you just said, all right, fine. Fine, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to do what I need to do. The embracing your gifts part, the mastery of your gifts that comes like in this, that comes in the full moon part of March. Hang on. That comes in the full moon part of March. You embracing yourself and embracing 
yeah, you end up becoming a very, very powerful person, Sag. And um, it's going to scare some people, but that's not your problem. That's not your problem. Um, the devil is usually the truths that we don't really want to confront about ourselves. Venus represents the devil too. So I feel like Perva Ashara, which is Venus Domina, might feel all of this more acutely. The devil is in the things that we try to hide. The devil is in the things that we try to conquer. Oh, yeah. The devil is in the things that we try to conquer rather than understand. That's what our devil is. It's not about morality. It's not about morality. It's not about anything like that. The devil represents the thing that we try to control out of our own fear rather than understanding it, embracing it and adapting to it. Nature is the devil. You know, if you're, be if you're beautiful, if you're beautiful and on the outside and you're violent on the inside, then the violence is the devil. The devil is the thing that is hidden beneath the surface. And when you embrace that part of yourself that's hidden beneath the surface, when you embrace all your worries, all your fears, and yeah, you're surrounded by negative people, how does that make you feel like become one with those feelings? So the next time you go through it, it just, it just doesn't affect you. And from there, you attain mastery of your gifts. So that's for the new moon in Shatabisha for Sagittarius. That was for Mula. That was for Purva Ashada and Uttara Ashada. Uttara Ashada. Thank you, Sag. Okay. Who's next? Cancer. Cancer. All right. Let's see what's in store for you. Now, I predicted that you would be more adaptable and less flighty with your money. So that's what I predicted for cancer, right? Now, I, say, I, I see from the notes. Now, let's just get the timer on. One, two, three, four, building blocks. Building blocks for cancers. I'm liking, this, I'm liking this already. Okay, so for cancer, we've got three of wands. We've got the king of wands and we've got the father of knives. Mm. A lot of pragma pragmatism, a lot of logic, a lot of progress. And for you, I've got leader in trade, opportunistic leader, opportunity to be a leader, international businessman, copyright, patent, trademarks, protecting intellectual properties, fast-paced leader, competitive leader, psychiatrist, psychologist, control freak, hard work starting to pay off, defensive leader, political leader, educational leader, becoming a master and mastering a new skill. All right, so cancers. Oh boy, um... I'm looking at these two. And the reason I'm looking at these two is because this represents you. I talked about, I talked about in the overall new moon in Shatabisha reading. And especially with the first quarter in Rigashira, I talked about new versus old. And I talked about a tyrant making an unwilling sacrifice and having that backfire. That's represented by this when it comes to you, Cancer. There's somebody in your life still clinging on to an old way of life that isn't working anymore. And you are already embracing the new path that is coming. You're already embracing the new world that's coming. Which is exactly why your attitude to money has changed. And your attitude towards what you have has changed. Is because you know what's coming up and you're not deluding yourself about it. But this person is. This person is just hanging on to what they have through sheer force of will. 
but there's only so much that that can carry you. If you if you're a deludinoid and you've got a sheer force of will, there's only so far that that can actually carry you before everything around you starts to crumble. And this person who is trying to control you, Cancer, everything around them is crumbling. You, on the other hand, are going from strength to strength, even with this going on, even though you're not actually losing any money. It's just, you're just having to reshuffle. You are the one who's thriving and going from strength to strength, and you've got that behind you. And what this is, is you embracing new horizons. You're seeing beyond your front door. You're seeing the world beyond your window. You're seeing how things could turn out and will turn out. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's what I need to prioritize right now. Not trying to hang on to a past that literally did nothing but hold me back. Like I'm not holding on to that anymore. But this other element in your life, this other person in your life, they want you to hold on to that old world and that old way of thinking. They want you to stay stuck, but you're not going to stay stuck no matter how hard they try to make it that way. And it's not necessarily just because of you and your own determination. It's also because of the way the world is right now. So this person is trying to hold on to a, a new set, hold on to a set of rules and a set of standards that they think will make them powerful, but it's actually taking away their power. Whereas with you, you're gaining power. I don't see you being the one that's being sacrificed. I think that this person sacrifices someone else to try to get one on, over on you, but it doesn't work. And the sacrifice is... It's not literal. It's it's metaphorical. It's entirely metaphorical in this case. So this person tries to make a sacrifice to get one over on you, but it doesn't work. Instead, it strengthens you. And. Yeah. Did I read the rest of the notes? It says hard work starting to pay off defensive leader, political leader, educational leader becoming a master, mastering a new skill. You're the one who becomes the master. And you're the one who leads the charge. This person wants to be in charge, but it's like they're losing it. They're losing it. They're losing it. They're losing it and they're becoming angry, but their rage is impotent. You're rising up through the ranks. I don't know if this is socially, you know, for some of you, it could even be globally. There could be a world leader who's a Cancerian, who's a Vedic Cancerian or even a tropic cancerian that is rising up through the ranks as the new face of being fair and just and righteous and this other person could be a fucking tyrant but you are the one who is going to rise up through the ranks when it comes to the new moon in Shatabisha it's that fucking serious so it's it's essentially a power struggle but you're, it's almost like you're not involved because you're not fighting to have power over someone else. Like you could give a fuck. You're not, you're not fighting to have power over someone else, Cancer. You're just doing your thing. You're just doing your thing. You're just, you're just, you know, that's it. You're just doing your thing. You're not doing anything like to try to take control over anybody or to try to like, but this person just won't let go. And it could be professional, it could be, I feel like it's more professional than anything else, but it could be relationships too. Whatever toxic element is in your life, they're trying to maintain control over you, but you ain't having it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, baby, that's cancer. I mean, yeah, cancer. That is for Pranavasu, Pusha, and... Ashlesha. I feel like this is Ashlesha. I feel like Ashlesha are the ones who are coming into their power and other people are trying to pull them down. Mm. Watch out for that, but I feel like they're weakening Ashlesha. 
So yeah, that was for Cancer. Thank you, Cancer. Leo. All right. I saw nothing but love for the Leos. I saw beauty. I saw romance. I saw you guys getting it on. Well, not getting it on, but like I saw a beautiful emotional relationship for the Leos. That's what I saw from March 2022. But what about this? Well, we've got the King of Cups, which kind of backs up everything that I was saying. We've got the Temperance card, which backs up everything that I was saying. And we've got the Eight of Sticks. And I really love this card because what Eight of Sticks or the Eight of Wands usually means is that you are going to be busy, but literally everything that you're busy doing, it revolves around something or someone that you actually love. And I really do love that for you. And yeah, long may it continue, Leah. Um, so... For the notes, Leo, I've got diplomatic message. I've got newfound well-being. I see that for you. I've got unexpected healing. I see that for you too. I've got multitasking. I've got musician. I've got strong psychic, recklessness, progress in politics, leadership and or management. Oh, why did I get to that? Oh, Leo, Leo, Leo. Oh, as soon as I said progress in politics, leadership and or management, it's like a shot of energy just went through my body. Leo, I don't think it is going to be you that is going to be the new leader of anything. I think it will be someone else. But whoever it is, there is a transition of power that is going to benefit you massively. And I feel that your intuition is right in line with that change of power and with that shift of power and that transition, especially if you're Maga. If you are a Maga Leo, you are very much in tune with the change of leadership and it's going to be something that benefits you massively. Yes, you're going to do something reckless, but it pays off. It pays off extremely well because that reckless shit that you did, it leads you to making an excellent strategic decision. That reckless move that you do is an, ex is an excellent strategic decision that you end up making. And the results of that are going to be as clear as, you know, as they're going to be very, very clear to you at the end of the new moon cycle um, of Shatabisha. But I feel like it's someone else who's going to be a leader. It might possibly somebody that you're in a relationship with that might be a political leader of some kind or an activist of some kind that's going to be leading the charge. It might even be the cancer. It might even be the cancer. There is somebody who is a political leader or a political activist that finds themselves on the right side of history or at least on the surviving side of history and you end up being with this person and supporting this person but in the process you boost your own power and on top of that you find your health improves your health improves on top of that it's your health actually improves. So not only do you find love, but your health gets better. Your status elevates. And the person that you're with, <coughs> there may be a king of wands, yes. Because I really get the feeling this is about Cancerian energy. I really get the feeling that for Vedic Leos, you might be with a Vedic Cancer. If you're not, I apologize, but it could be a water sign of any kind. But if you are with the Vedic Cancer, then to you, they're going to be a reliable, honest, kind, affectionate person. They're going to be utterly supportive of everything that you do. So, of course, you being a Leo, you're going to match that energy. And you're going to defend that person until your last breath. Because of course you are. You're a Leo and that's what you do. But I really feel like 
somebody in your life is coming to a certain state of power and prestige and influence and they want you with them they can't they can't ascend that they feel like they can't ascend the heights without you there they can but they don't want to and i feel like you leo yeah i should I, you know i keep referring to the leo as female because i'm maga sun but the truth of the matter is is that if you're a maga sun male and you end up with a powerful cancerian female it might work a little bit differently what the cancerian female might end up doing is she might end up becoming a socialite or a charity worker or something along those lines and you may end up being the one who is the breadwinner but you're supporting her and her aspirations because she's doing something significant <coughs> if you are a leo female you might be the one who's with a cancer male or a cancer female no you might be the one who's with a cancer male who is the leader that I'm talking about? If you're a Leo female, you may end up being with the woman who's more powerful than you, but the, the powerful woman, the powerful cancer woman. If you're a woman dating another woman, you might be with a cancer woman who, who is more powerful than you, but doesn't want to do any of the shit without you. And if you're a Leo man with a, a, a cancer man, well, same thing. The the cancer man is going to be more powerful than you, but as a Leo man, they're not going to want to be they're not going to want to be without you. So you are going to form an important part of this union. And you will end up doing things that you enjoy. It's like you're being allowed to rest <coughs> to rest in your Leonine power. The truth of the matter is, right? is that Aquarius is supposed to be the one who leads, like as a sign, as a sign generally. The Aquarius is the one who leads by consensus because they follow their destiny first. And that's what leads the rest of the world to choose them. Whereas Leo leads by personal will, by, you know, and they demonstrate their authority more directly. But as a Leo, you're not actually supposed to do that. What you're supposed to do is lead people with your joy. If you're having fun, it doesn't matter what you do. People will follow you and want to follow you. So, you know, demonstrating your authority on everybody rather than letting somebody else lead is not going to be the move for you, Leo. But the truth of the matter is, I don't see you doing that anyway. I don't see you trying to take anything over or trying to you know assert dominance or nothing like that I don't see you doing any of that instead what I see you doing is becoming the more intuitive force and here I was thinking here I was thinking that cancer was the more intuitive force but no Leo it's going to be you that's the more intuitive force guiding the water sign and that water sign is going to trust you and because they trust you guess what the decision they make those decisions are going to work out because the thing is they trusted your instinct but they said okay my leo partner says this let me do that in this way and it works so yeah leo i see you being a part of a power couple or maybe even a power thruple i see that for you and the signs of that are going to be actually very very obvious like you know almost immediately but I do see you doing what you love I do see you emotionally more settled I do see you becoming healthier it's actually a really good look for you Leo I do love it um yeah I see you being powerful Leo I'm not gonna lie to you but the irony is is that you come into this power not through exerting your will and roaring but from you purring and being more vulnerable and being, you know, just just a bit nicer, like just just hanging back and letting people do their thing. And that's ultimately what gives you your power. So that is for Leo. That was for Maga, Perva Falguni and Utra Falguni. Leos, I love you. Do your thing. You got this.
Once again, forgive the noise disturbance, but we're going to continue. Capricorn. Yeah, Capricorn, you're another sign with love on the way, but your love is a bit less dramatic. But let's see what happens for the Cappies. Okay, so I did say that you would attract a love in your life. And that love was going to be decided by karma or fate or most likely it was going to be a love that was true to your ancestral bloodline. Now, when it comes to the new moon, the notes that I'm getting are kind of, they're a bit, they're a bit out there, they're a bit much, but let me read them anyway. It says post-traumatic stress. Dark adventure, getting into trouble, stress, overwhelm, spiritual guidance, coming out of your shell, creative career, taking on too much, compensation, ruling the night scene. I really feel that um, for the new moon, at least, um, your road towards having that love and having that romance in your life, Capricorn, it has a bit of an inauspicious start. Um it has a bit of an inauspicious start. It has a bit of a start of, I don't see you getting into trouble, but what I do see is you having to work through a lot of past trauma, like all the stuff that you've done and the stuff that's been done to you. You having to work through a lot of past trauma and you having to release a lot of emotion. It might feel like a really, really ugly time for you. And, you know, this stuff is ugly. I mean, trying to confront your demons is always an ugly, is always an ugly business, but, you know, it's got to be done. And I really feel that through that, through you working through that, <coughs> it's almost like Cappy, but no, I mean like Sag, it's almost like Sag, but with Sag, it's more not violent, but it's more to do with warfare and aggression and, you know, and fear. Whereas with, with you, Cappy, it's more to do with sorrow. And it's like you have to, you have to become one with your grief. And there are many different instances where Cappy, you might have found yourself grieving. And this is not just about death. A lot of people associate grief, grief with death, but grief can also represent change, even when the change is necessary. There have been necessary changes that you've made in your life that you're grieving about. You'll also be grieving about past losses, but it's at that crucial point where the grief overwhelms you that you actually come out of that situation reborn and you come out of it with a stronger sense of self than you had beforehand. And I feel that it's not romantic love that you get at first. I feel like it's platonic love and, you know, you heal relations with your family. Like I said before, the romance that you end up attracting it has an ancestral element to it. And when you're healing those wounds for the period of the new moon, when you're healing those wounds, you know, it leads to hopeful new situations. And I know the emotional stuff is really not right where you live, Cappy, but I feel that by you getting through the emotional stuff, you will find a sense of grounding and you will find a sense of who you actually are as a person because what this represents is sensitivity. Purva Bajrapada. I associate Purva Bajrapada with this card. And the reason I do that is because it's not just about mystery and it's not just about the fullness of one's emotions. It's also about one's ethics, one's morals, one's sense of self. And I really feel that when you go through the trauma and the grief and you allow yourself to process it, that's when you start to realize the true and full nature of who you are as a person. But then comes the challenge of 
does that overwhelm you? Do you end up, you know, taking that emotion and then trying to burn it off with action? Because Saturn dominant folk can be guilty of that. They can be guilty of, you know, burying their feelings in their work. Because remember, Saturn is the process of burning off. In the, in the alchemical process, Saturn is the process of burning off excess water, right? So fire and water are associated with Saturn. Saturn is the process of burning off the extra liquid in order to find the Galena. But there are times where that's an appropriate thing to do. And then there are times where that's not an appropriate thing to do. And right now it's not an appropriate thing to do to hide your emotions behind work or action. Actually, set a Capricorn, if I'm honest with you, you really, if you're doing too much work, you need to pare down on that a little bit because it's actually interfering with your healing process. And what you don't want is for all that trauma and all that emotion to just sort of be backed up and then unleashed in a way that's inopportune. You don't want that. So pair back on your work, pair back on your duties a little bit. Give yourself some time and space to feel. That's why Saturn alone is. That's why Saturn alone is as well. It's because Saturn signs and Saturn dominant people are actually very, very sensitive feeling signs. So they need the space and they need the room to process their emotions so that they can go into the world, work hard, and process everything around them and then come back they need quiet you need space you need solitude so you're not going to get that if you're overworking though that's the thing that a Saturn, a saturnian sign or a saturn dominant sign tends to miss is that you're not going to find that peace and that solace if you're overworking so if you're working too much pair back allow yourself to feel and when you do, you will have healed new relationships in your life. You will have healed familial relationships and platonic relationships. And then towards the full moon, towards the full moon, you'll have a new love. You have a new love life, but that will lead to advancements in your career as well. So that's for Capricorn. That was for Uttara Ashada, Shravana and Danishta. Thank you, Cappy. Okay. All right, so we've got Libra next. Libra. So let's see what we have in store for you. So let's have a look at the March 2022 reading to see, just get a short outline of what is in store for Libra. So I'm going to have to look up the old video again. I know it's lazy as hell, but I've got to do it. If I can't remember, then, you know, it's got to be done. What's in store for Libra now? All right, Libra. So for your notes, I've got long-term study. Release the universe. What am I, what did I intuitively sense for you? I get, I don't know, I don't know why, but I feel like you're being too rigid. Mm. I feel like when it comes to anything to do with domestic situations especially you want to be guided you want to be guided some by somebody as to what you should do next but the thing is you already know what to do right there we go so too much rigidity libra and you Feeling like you feeling like you don't know what to do when you actually know exactly what to do. So yeah, so there's too much rigidity on your part 
and you really need to trust your intuition. The Queen of Cups here represents that intuition that you need to trust because she is fully developed. Now, the Queen of Cups can be simplistic and emotionally led, <coughs> but that doesn't mean she's wrong. She often has a telepathic sense of what other people need and what she needs. But we've got the Seven of Wands and John, Ho and John Horse here, which represents the Emperor. So let's see what we can get from that. Let's have a look at the notes. All right, so. Queen of Cups. Seven of Wands. And John Horse. All right. So. What we've got here for the notes is intuitive leadership, successful leader, victory in intellectual areas, detective, spy, leader in creative industries, new abilities, opposition, stable legal system, police. You see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You are overly reliant on somebody who is logically opinionated. Like, why are you relying on them for? The situation that you're in, either financially or domestically, especially domestically, or even professionally, the situation that you find yourself in in the new moon, it's something that requires creative thinking and you have plenty of that. That's why Libra is another sign that's good at pretty much everything, which is why they can have trouble deciding exactly what they want to do because they're good at fucking everything. And the reason why you guys are so good at everything is because you are emotionally open and you are open. You are very, very intuitive. In fact, out of all the air signs, the Librans are actually the ones who are the most intuitive. Gemini is way too much in their own head. They can, they can be abstract and they have the capability of thinking outside the box, but they're too in their own head. And Aquarians are definitely too much in their own head because they're inverting everything. But Libras are literally the most intuitive air signs there are. And when you ignore your intuition, that's when things start to go wrong. You already know what to do. So why are you asking this person who has absolutely no interest in progressing forward, no interest in looking at things in new ways, no interest in innovating, what you should be doing with your home life or with your, with your professional life, or with your relationships, or with your finances, why are you trusting this person? This person is not going upwards, so, what, so that means they're going downwards. And ordinarily, order and structure and discipline, things that would normally be good in a situation like this, is actually wearing them down. It's actually wearing them down. They're giving you advice based on not knowing what else to do. You already have the answers. When it comes to the new moon in Shatabisha and for the energy for the new moon, you already know what to do. You've got the instinct, you've got the instinct and you've got the intuition, you already know what to do. So when you trust yourself and you trust your own decisions, you end up doing extremely well with your finances, with your domestic life, even with your professional life. When you follow your instincts and you follow your heart and you ignore naysayers, you end up doing extremely well. You know when you're not going to do well is when you're taking advice from every other schmuck that is basically closed-minded and don't understand the fullness of Libra's vision. Because you have vision, Libra. You're one of the most visionary signs in the zodiac, quiet as it's kept. You're a visionary, Libra. It's just that the way that you express those visionary impulses, you've managed to find a way to do it without being offen offensive to too many people. This is why you get the reputation of being anodyne. And Sorry, this is how, you, you know, people tend to mistake your visionary imagination for being anodyne and compromised when really you are the opposite of anodyne and the opposite of compromised. You are actually, in fact very very imaginative and your intuition is brilliant so when you end up following it in this new moon for the next 30 days you end up doing extremely well financially extremely well in your domestic life and even extremely well in your relationships and your professional life you need to trust yourself more stand your ground 
because this person right here, uh-uh. This is where you need to be. You need to have the same enthusiasm of a child into this new situation. And you need to trust your own North Star. So, yeah, Libra, you need to trust your own North Star. You need to trust your own intuition and your own instincts in this case. Follow your heart for the new moon. So, yeah, that's for Libra. That was for Chitra, Sfati and Vishaka. I love you, Libra. Thank you. Last but not least, we come to Taurus. Hey, Taurus, how are you? All right, so when it comes to this now, what did I say about you guys, Taurus? I'm sorry, I'm increasingly having to use my, my past videos in order to remember things because my memory isn't so good. So, Taurus, what did I say for you? All right, Taurus, just bear with. Taurus. All right. Eight pentacles, sisterhood, postgraduate. In All right. What do I get for you intuitively? I feel like many Taurians are tired. Mm. It feels like, because I'm going by the notes here, there is a distinct feeling of having to relearn what you're already really, really good at. But instead of feeling excited by it, you feel kind of depressed by it because it's like, really, I have to learn this shit all over again. But this... Right. So that was the vibe that I got from Taurus. It felt like you were relearning something that you were already very skilled at. And I, I feel like there's nothing that a Taurian hates more than to not know things. And it, it is true that Taurians have a really big ego underneath everything, but I, I really feel that it's not actually to do with ego and it's more to do with the fact that if you don't know everything, you don't have to know everything right away, but if you don't know everything, then you can't make preparations. And if you can't make preparations, then when a situation arises that you're not, that you didn't foresee, then it throws you off. So Taurians feel like they have to know everything for the, in, for the sake of safety, not necessarily ego. But now Taurians find themselves in a situation where they absolutely have to know what's going on, but they can't get that. And it's frustrating you. Now, what does it say for the notes for you, Taurus? Divine timing being an advocate for someone, truth coming out, this is what's causing this, truth coming out, manager, common sense, unwritten laws, speaking the truth, barrister, legal documents, lawyer, defensive person, I really feel that because of the truths that have come out and because you realise you were wrong in a lot of shit, now you're thinking, God damn, like seriously, it's, it's, you know, it'd be one thing if it was just a matter of embarrassment. But if you're, you were wrong about something serious, then it leaves you completely unprepared. At this point, Taurus, you do not know what to do. And I find that with the first quarter of Mrigashira, that eases up a little bit and you start to think to yourself, okay, all right. So this situation happened that I was completely unprepared for all right, what can I do now? Because there are still things that I'm good at. There are still things that I know how to do. How do I use that to contribute this to this entirely new situation? Okay. 
But when the new moon drops in Shatabisha, you're like, fucking hell. Like, you, this catches you completely by surprise and you just do not know what to do and you don't know like what anything is anymore because you're the type of sign that prides themselves on having common sense only for that common sense to only be agreed upon sense and not eternal wisdom so now you feel like that common sense attitude that you had all along that you preached to other people about now you're feeling like oh shit i feel like a complete dummy and yeah, when the new moon in Shatabisha comes out and everything is inverted, that's when you see the truth of the situation that you're in and the truth that other people tried to tell you about that you weren't hearing. Okay? So, yeah. Damn, it's just, yeah, it's a lot to handle. But once you get into, once you accept that you didn't know everything, that what you thought was true wasn't true, that's when you'll kind of think to yourself, all right, so what can we do from here? Now, you've got justice and justice. Now, um, the Afro-Brazilian card went by the traditional tarot and then the African-American one went by the right away. So they're both the justice card. But I feel like the numbers that they're at, it represents your state of mind. Because this change with the Rider Waite happened after the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn decided that it made more sense to put Justice as the 11th card rather than the 8th card. And it represents, in a way, where your mind is at. You're finding out, you, you know, you've built a, you know, a sort of, not tradition, but you've built an established way of thinking for yourself. Only to find a new way that makes more sense than your way. And you're having to adapt to that. But in the interest of fairness, you're begrudgingly going along with it. And that's a good move. It's a good move for you to go along with the truth and to go along with justice. So, yeah, you felt you felt like a dummy for kind of, you know, preaching this no-nonsense thing. And, you, yeah, you felt like a dummy for doing it. But at least this way... When you see the truth as it is, it allows you to prepare. And that's exactly what you do. You handle this situation in a realistic way, in a calm way. And you're like, OK, this is not a favorable situation. But what can I do from here? This feels like your life in general, honestly. Um, we've got the sticks here and we've got the pentacles here. And normally that represents career. But I don't see this as a career thing. I see this as a life thing in general. Everything that you thought was isn't. Now you're having to redo your whole life around this new knowledge that you've discovered. But you're going to be all right. You just have to kind of put your ego aside. And Taurians aren't very good at this, but you're going to have to learn how to ask questions. You're going to have to learn how to ask questions. You're going to have to learn how to be more humble. And you know, just, yeah, you're going to have to learn how to be more humble. You're just going to have to learn how to be, you know, I don't know this. Can you help me? You're going to have to have that type of attitude, right? So, yeah, next time somebody talks to you, listen to what they have to say, weigh it up in your mind, use your experience to filter things through because, you know, Torians like to do that and then you'll realize where your point of view could use some tweaking or your your um where I call it there your knowledge could use some tweaking but that oh, that will only make you better at what you do and that will only make you better at managing your life so go along with it open your mind keep your mind open and do what you got to do all right so that was my reading for Taurus that was for Critica that was for Kritika, Rohini, and Mrigashira. I love you, Taurus. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.